I'm Brad Jones, and I'm a new assistant professor at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. So I'm working on the shock and kill strategy, which is a very popular uh, eradication strategy. And the idea here is that the virus um, goes latent, so it actually hides in the population of cells in people. So we think we need to do something to wake the virus up out of that latent state, and that'll give us an opportunity to come in with immune effectors, so uh, killer T cells or antibodies to kill those cells. And what we're focusing on is a particular type of drug that can wake up um, these lately infected cells, but also enhance the function of these killer T cells. So we have this dual-pronged approach that we hope will uh, eradicate this reservoir. Excellent. Tell me about your hottest research in the past year, what your exciting findings have been. So what I'm most excited about actually is I've done uh, t experiments in the test tube with these killer T cells uh, and I've seen that these can actually eradicate latently infected cells in vitro uh, with kind of a surprising finding that sometimes we don't always need uh, these latency reversing agents to get this killing. Uh, so that's something we're, we're delving uh, deeper into because uh, it suggests that although latency is definitely important, there could be other obstacles in the body um, that we need to think some more about. Oh, exciting. <laughs> um, great. And what are you excited to see here at IIS? So I'm actually interested in uh, seeing what's happening in the vaccine field. So I've been, you know, pretty entrenched in cure research, and cure research is, is kind of my personal priority. But I think there's a lot we can learn from uh, people trying to work on a vaccine and vice versa. And that kind of cross-fertilization is something that I think is important and that I want to get exposed to here at this meeting. That's excellent. That's actually what I really like about meetings too, is that cross-pollination. Exactly. Um, and uh, tell me how important AMFAR has been in funding your work. Uh, really instrumental, I think, um, maybe in a, almost in a, probably not a unique position, but a special position where AMFAR gave me my first uh, independent grant very recently. And so that uh, support at this really early stage in my career is, I think, especially important because not only is AMFAR supporting that particular project, but, um, you know, whatever success basically I hope to go on to achieve in the future uh, is at least, uh, you know, partially credited to AMFAR for giving me that support and that kind of vote of confidence early on. I think uh, I'm really optimistic. I think it's, you know, it, it, it might come from a direction that we're not necessarily expecting. I think there's been quite a history of that uh, in all medical research. And, you know, obviously we have different directions that we want to push in, but I think as long as we uh, go to the lab every day, work hard every day, and keep our eyes open, especially for unexpected discoveries, and as long as we can keep counting on the support of foundations like AMFAR and of um, the study participants, really importantly, and the, the community uh, that we're going to get there um, maybe even sooner than we think.